We seem to have got through this far, and with the day waning and the sun going down, Na'ila in sight, this most challenging set of high holy day services are drawing to an end, and indeed the gates are closing. We have thanked and acknowledged those various people who have helped, those already experienced, and those like me who have rapidly had to become experts in the intricacies of Zoomus, YouTube, OBS software, multi-congregation hookups, and various other electronic media. And whilst we've tried to make it look as much like usual as possible, I must tell you that the reading desk looks like a space shuttle cockpit, and there's little room to read Torah. You might say, well done, and thank you to those who have helped. And we hope you've appreciated it and derived significant benefit from our services this year, as in other years. We have already had many kind comments, but we haven't yet had many new volunteers. In April, our long-standing and much appreciated atheist, humanist-leaning member Richard Harcourt died. And our community, and especially our House of Studies and Adult Education program, miss him and the academic rigor, as well as his pithy wit and smile that he brought to so many years of our activities. And we acknowledge Alison, our esteemed Leo Beck lecturer from 2019, as well as their son Pierre, who, has, who, who was a Havara lunch speaker this year, both of whom maintain their regular connections with LBC. In May, Gina Solomon, beloved daughter of Roy and Jennifer and sister of Danielle, died after a long illness. And the memorial book is dedicated to her memory this year. A few months ago in July, our long-standing member and supporter, Walter Castellan, who would regularly sit just there, died quite suddenly, having just been appointed as a governor of Tel Aviv University to recognize his experience and his many, many years of devoted work for Israel. And we acknowledge the huge loss, especially to Veronica and their three boys. In August, another generous member and supporter of LBC, Nathan Fink, died. And we again extend our condolences to Ellie, as well as the son Michael and grandchildren Josh and Lottie. Nathan was another person who gave so much time and commitment to community, especially to Jewish care, where he'd been made a life governor, acknowledging all he had done for it. Just before Rosh Hashanah, our stalwart and much appreciated life member Marlies Cohen died, and we lost a very special person who will be extremely hard to replace. Marlies, with her late husband Lou, and of course their daughter Shireen, have been committed members of LBC since virtually the time it started, and Marlies also worked extensively and tirelessly as a volunteer for the wider Jewish community and for Israel. She was either treasurer or co-treasurer at LBC every single year since before we arrived in 2003. And I'm sure there's a danger here. I'm sure I've not listed everybody who is loved and remembered by members of the community, and this is your time to do them. As our older members are less able to do as much as they once did, or as they die, we need new blood with new ex experience and ideas, to replace the Richards and Walters, the Nathans and Marlises, and the many others who gave so much to maintain and develop our precious and unique community. So please, think about how important it is that you are a part of this community and that you have such meaningful services to attend, even when they are virtual ones. Perhaps it's time to allocate a bit of time or a bit more, to volunteering at LBC. On Slichot Evening, as part of our preparation, we showed the film Gentlemen Before God, the story of my friend, teacher, and colleague, Willie Wolf, who started life fleeing from Berlin, became a political columnist in London, and made a midlife career change to being a wonderful rabbi in the UK before, at 85, returning to serve the progressive Jewish communities in Germany and who died this year at 91. Another remarkable and seemingly unstoppable, indomitable woman 
Also short of stature, but huge in wisdom, influence and personality, integrity and drive, but on the opposite side of the world, as I mentioned last night, US Judge Ruth Bader Ginsburg. In their 11-minute tribute to her, the New York Times failed to mention once that she was Jewish. And of course, you don't have to be Jewish to be a renowned judge, though you might say it could help. Apparently, she had a painting with the words, Sedek, Sedek Tir Dov, justice, justice shall you pursue. There have, of course, been a disproportionate number of Jewish judges, although she was the first woman to be chosen way back in President Carter's time. Again, she's a model. We can't, of course, all become judges, but we can all seek to do whatever is in our power and our line of work to speak out and push forward to have an impact, do the absolute best we can, and strive for more than just getting to the end of another week. The notorious RBG, as she became known, was an unspoken critic when she saw weak and lax leadership. And of course, the appointment of judges in the US and their records and tendencies has become a very public and very political issue. Where I understand that her replacement has now been announced by a far more conservative choice. And this in itself, at this short period before the election, is now another contentious and troubling issue to add to the lengthy list as we come to the November 3rd elections. A headline reads, the fight over the Supreme Court could make the US presidential election even nastier. Clearly judges are allowed to have and state their opinions there, which is perhaps surprising to the rest of the Anglo world. But with six films made about her, and New York erecting a statue in Brooklyn, and even the president paying her tribute, it seems her influence may even be as significant after her death as before. Ginsburg had told her family shortly before she passed away on Friday that it was her fervent wish that she should not be replaced until there is a new president. US Jewish actor and singer Mandy Patinkin took the opportunity on NBC to publicize her message, I want her wish to be heard, so I will blow the shofar for her, Patinkin said. He then blew a long and clear tequila in honor of the Supreme Court Justice. So now her wish will be heard, the actor said. Let it be heard throughout the land. We have quite a few members at LBC who have come from the US and usually have families still there and maintain stronger or looser ties with the country and worry for its future. One sent me these words from the vigil for RBG outside the US Supreme Court on Saturday evening where the shofar was also blown. They are from Rabbi Esther Lederman, who they knew in America and now works at the headquarters of the Union for Reform Judaism. She spoke after a beautiful Havgalah service at the vigil, followed by Kaddish and many other progressive Jewish speakers, including Elizabeth Warren. I'm Rabbi Esther Lederman, and I'm here with the Union for Reform Judaism and the National Council of Jewish Women. We gather tonight to mourn Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, feminist icon, hero to millions, wife, mother, bubba, child of an immigrant and a Jew, the first Jewish female justice on the Supreme Court. The shofar we just sounded awakens in us the call for justice. Justice Ginsburg knew the pain of injustice. She faced anti-Semitism and gender discrimination she dedicated her life to stopping such discrimination against others. As a lawyer, Ruth Bader Ginsburg successfully argued five landmark gender discrimination cases at the Supreme Court. Her efforts put our country on a more righteous path. Justice Ginsburg was powerful even when her views did not prevail on landmark cases that addressed pay discrimination, religious freedom and voting rights. She had this to say about the art of the dissent. Dissents speak to a future age. The greatest dissents do become court opinions and gradually over time their views become the dominant view. So that's the dissenters hope that they are writing not for today, but for tomorrow. 
Justice Din Ginsburg died on the cusp of the Jewish New Year. As a faith that follows a lunar calendar, our New Year falls on a new moon. New moons are invisible to the naked eye. We mark the timing of this holiday that evokes renewal and creation with something we can't see, but know it's there, with the faith that we will see its brightness shine upon us again. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we will no longer see you at the opera or hear you ask questions from the bench, but we know you are here in each and every one of us. Your name will eternally be for a blessing. Our children and grandchildren and generations to come will grow up learning your name, guided by your legacy of feminism, justice and righteousness. Rest in peace, Justice Ginsburg. May your memory be a revolution. Powerful words from Rabbi Lederman. Judaism is indeed a revolution. Though I've pointed out before, revolutions can be harmful and damaging. I believe Judaism is a slow and peaceful revolution. Slow, but determined and unstoppable. RBG was not satisfied with it is what it is. She spent her lifetime working towards making it what it could and what it should be. As she says in such Talmudic terms, since the Talmud always records the voices of those who disagree or are the minority, Dissent speaks to a future age. Even when we are a minority of one, that does not mean we are wrong. So at this point in this powerful and poignant day, when we think of our loved heroes or congregants or family and friends who are no longer alive, we have a heightened awareness of our own lives, of the potential that we each have on every day that we wake up. And we are keenly aware that we don't know how many days that will be, perhaps even less than the 353 days until the 16th of September next year when we gather, hopefully in person, for Yom Kippur 5782. But we pray for thousands more days and many, many more good years. But many or few, they will be good for us to a large degree because of what we choose to do with them. Let us use them wisely and generously to move on this gentle but ceaseless revolution, to create a better, fairer, healthier, safer world to work for all its inhabitants, humans and animals, flora and fauna, nature around the globe, and not just for ourselves. Help us to be the change we want to see and recognize that we are God's tools for this end.